It uh, says we're now live on Facebook. Let me just verify. Okay. I guess we're live, I think. Okay. Um, it, it just may be you and me. Um, we'll see. I know Angelica is having problems uh, with her uh, Wi-Fi, her connection. Um, Brian said that he is on holiday, and I believe Ian uh, is in California. Um, so it may very well be you and me. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. So I'm relaxed and calm. Uh, for those of you who are joining us on Facebook, um, I'd like to say hi. Um, I'm trying a new experiment today. Uh, just over on my right hand side, I've got a little tablet, which is, uh, it doesn't seem, seems to be stopped, but it should be showing me the Facebook stream. I'm uh, not sure why it seems to be stopped. Perhaps it's the uh, problem of my tablet. Hopefully it's going where you're watching. Um, let me just try and refresh this. So how are things in Morocco? Um, well, uh, normal, I normal, guess. Normal? Um, you know, as I just said to you, I think before we uh, started broadcasting on Facebook Live, um, a lot of uh, the normal members of the group um, are unable to make it. Uh, mm -hmm. Karen uh, just got back from the USA. She lives in Mexico. Uh, apparently, she's a little too tired to concentrate. Angelica, her uh, 3G network or something like that is down. Um, I believe Ian is in California um, at his uncle's memorial, and Brian is on uh, holiday. So uh, usually when this happens to me with work, I'm a hypnotherapist, and sometimes I will get, you know, for a week, it'll be a massive cancellation. It's like everyone cancels. And when one person does, it's okay, but when two, three, I grow very accepting. I realize that perhaps something is going on in the universe. Um, this gives me an opportunity to uh, talk to Hisham a little bit more, to perhaps probe a little bit more uh, about his inner work. And I will also be discussing mindfulness, uh, uh, finishing up that topic from last week. But how are things in Morocco, uh, Hisham? How are things with your inner work? Um, whatever you can shed light on, could potentially help someone who is watching or who watches this later on YouTube um, if they're experiencing the same problems or the same issues. How are things going inner-wise? Uh, well, inner-wise, as, as I have uh, said last week, I have decided uh, uh, for a, uh, a three-month plan, uh, some goals or aims that I want to achieve by the end of September. Okay. I have been. Uh, I have been. Uh, I also. I also uh, resumed the jogging once again. So it has been two weeks now that I have been working on this. Okay. Uh, I uh, so uh, I I have been trying to to incorporate uh, these changes uh, little, little little bit by uh, little by little, bit by bit. Not so forcefully. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, I also uh, this this last week I have been uh, trying to to turn uh, in my head the, the impressions that I have been uh, gathering through these three years of work of inner work. Uh, this is an exercise that I have been doing uh, all these three years. There is a. a so many impressions and the understandings that I that I have got that I want to remember to fix them in my head. So uh, so any uh, any opportunity I have such impression or, or or understanding I keep repeating it in my head with images and feelings so that it sucks. And once it is there, uh, once I am sure that uh, I will never forget it, I uh, I. I don't, uh, I don't uh, return to it once more. So this week I have been trying to, to turn these impressions and understandings in my head, the, also the experiences which I had uh, 
in the beginning of 2008 and 2009, or I have I had uh, this uh, awakening of the, the magnetic center. I was trying to, to recapture them once more. The feelings of uh, uh, the positive emotions that I had through all these years. So I have been trying to recapture them in my mind. Um, two comments that I have here. Uh, one is in uh, Beelzebub Tales, uh, in the chapter on form and sequence. Uh, Mr. Gurdjieff, or as his, uh, you know, writing as Beelzebub, says that what we remember, or what we learn in a state of self-remembering, forever becomes a part of our being. So to bring that level of mindful awareness, to bring that level of self-reflectivity to this process, will allow you to lock it into your brain. Um, the other thing is, I, I don't know if you've ever read the uh, Herald of Coming Good, the small booklet that Mr. Gurdjieff published, and then he asked everyone to destroy it um, a few months later, but uh, some copies survived. Um, it's a very interesting book. It's a tiny little book, and in it he actually describes his own process of what I would think of as active being mentation. Uh, last week in the discussion on mindfulness, I said that self-remembering has a twin and that the twin is active being mentation. It's the awareness of our thoughts while in the mindful state, the awareness of the images and the words in our mind. And in that state, he also uh, describes looking at something from all different sides. So trying to get as comprehensive and as objective view as possible. So it sounds like you're doing that, that you have sort of found your way, felt your way to that understanding towards a degree of active being mentation and reflecting on those memories, reflecting on those things in your mind uh, locking them in to your memory is the twin of self-remembering. And it's actually wonderful that you've started to do it on your own and that you have begun to figure this out on your own because that means you own the knowledge. If you're taught the knowledge, say, in a classroom and you absorb it in a classroom, um, you can't really claim to own the knowledge. When you figure it out for yourself, and through that process of self-discovery and trial and error, you then own it. And uh, it sounds like you own it. Um, how is the self-remembering going? How is the awareness of yourself going? Uh, during this, this, uh, this recapturing of the last of uh, these moments? I, 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 both that and the rest of the time. Uh, well, uh, for the rest of the time, uh, uh, I try. Uh, well, I work in the office from from eight until uh, till five after in the afternoon. So I try as much to to, to take advantage of that uh, because uh, I am always I have always to do with the with the colleagues and in the, the chef. So so. Um, how do you do it when you're sitting in your office, when you're sitting in the chair? Is there a sequence? Is there a way that you activate the process? Pardon? Uh, I think Hisham is uh, frozen right now. Um, do you hear me, Alan? Uh, you froze for a second, but you're back now. Yes. yes. It seems yeah. I have uh, some, uh, some problems with my, with my connection. Also. Yeah. Well, I've actually, I went out and bought a, uh, um, an Ethernet cord, so I'm no longer connected through the uh, air. And you've frozen again. Um, you know, perhaps, uh, there you're back, uh, you're moving again. Um, so, I mean, can you describe, so you're at, in your office, you're sitting in your chair. Do you, how do you, how do you invoke, how do you start the process of remembering yourself? Uh, I don't try to remember yourself in the office, uh, but uh, but uh, rather I try to to uh, 
uh, for example, uh, not to talk about a certain subject, or when I have uh, an information, uh, uh, maybe. Okay, um, you seem to be breaking up again. Um, we'll see if you get back. Maybe not. Um, okay, uh, you, you broke up. So you, you, I don't yeah. Um, okay um yeah uh for those of you who are watching um you, you keep on freezing and unfreezing and freezing and unfreezing um so there, there's some kind of uh cosmic thing going on obviously um the normal members aren't here we're having problems connecting with you i'm gonna let, let's do an inner exercise um hopefully you will be able to follow the hisham and those of you who are watching on Facebook. Uh, if any of you are watching on Facebook, I would like to tell you that I've got uh, Facebook now on my tablet sitting right over here beside my computer. And hopefully later, if any of you have any questions, you may be able to type them in and hopefully I could read them and uh, so we can involve you as well. But one of the things that uh, Mr. Gurdjieff talks about and I will discuss this later, I will bring this up and read this later, is the importance of receiving external impressions. He doesn't use the word external, he just uses the word impressions. But through my 38 years in these teachings, I've realized that we can really separate external impressions that come to us from the outside world and internal impressions, sensations, feelings from inside of ourselves. So through the process of receiving external impressions, he says that we double the intensity of the impressions coming into us. And this is the process uh, that he calls the first conscious shock. So, Again, as I did last week, let's try to become aware of our eyes. Try to become aware of the physical structure of our eyes. Try to sense our eyes like two orbs resting in our eye sockets. Try to become aware of our eyes as organs for the perception of light. There are roughly 10 million photoreceptors in our eyes. The foveal receptors where we focus, if you hold your thumb out, the size of the tip of your thumb is really the, the, the foveal area that you focus. And as our vision moves around, it gets more and more peripheral and other photons come into play or other photons, other cells come into play. So become aware of your eyes. Become aware of your eyes receiving impressions. Become aware of the foveal, the focal point of your eyes. And then slowly, while you're still holding on to that foveal point, that focus with your eyes, Extend your awareness out in circles. Try to extend it right out until you become aware of the peripheral of your vision. So I cannot see my fingers now, actually. Um, I can see just the edges of my hands. As I come in, I can see my whole hands. So the peripheral of my vision is just about this far. Become aware of the peripheral of your vision. Become aware of the central point of your vision. Become aware of your eyes receiving information. And um, to backtrack, um, I guess I'm a little uh, just with today with not many people here. I'm just going to pull up the fact that we are doing this work for ourselves. I work. For myself, I work for mankind, I work for the earth herself. 
And then Mr. Gurdjieff's vow. I wish to be. I can be. I have the right to be. I have the ability to be. I swear to myself that this will never be for my personal profit, but to help others. I wish to be to help others. This is to be understood as a vow. And so those of you who are watching either now or later, whenever we do inner work, it's always good to remind ourselves that we are not just doing this inner work for ourselves. So again, become aware of your eyes. Become aware of your eyes receiving information. Become aware of the center of your vision, that foveal point of focus, and then slowly allow your visual acuity to expand outwards. Become aware of the peripheral of your vision. Become aware of your eyes receiving information. Perhaps allow your awareness to move up. Keep your focus center and just allow your awareness to move up to the top and then to the edges of your vision and then to the bottom of your vision and then to the sides of your vision. We can do inner work, inner exercises with our eyes, becoming aware of focusing on the center, the top, the sides, the bottom, back to the other side, to the top. We can allow our awareness to circle around our eyes without moving our eyes. And this will help us when we're out walking or doing other things and we begin to become aware of what we are seeing. Now, bring your awareness to your ears. The ears are actually receiving sound waves and they're transforming. And this word is important. They are transforming energy. They're transforming sound waves into electrical activity in our brain. This is why J.G. Bennett said that for a normal human being, no further refinement is necessary. The external impressions we receive have a sufficient energy to feed the machine. And it is feeding the machine when we engage just in the normal, habitual, auditory things are coming in our ears and we're not really aware of it. But we are receiving those impressions and it's being transformed into electrical energy, which is feeding our being. When we become aware of our ears, when we become aware of our ears receiving sound, we actually step up into the mindful state. We begin to engage in what Mr. Gurdjieff called the first conscious shock. So become aware of the sound that your ears are receiving. Become aware of the sound of my voice perhaps the sound of your breathing, perhaps any external sounds that are going on around you. And again, as with our eyes, there's actually with the equivalent of a foveal point for our ears. And if you notice, you can actually reach out with your ears to touch sources of sounds. This is something J.G. Bennett talks about in his book, Transformations, that we can consciously and deliberately and intentionally reach out with our ears in the same way our eyes can move and the foveal point in our eyes can change as we look in different places. We can do the same with our ears. So try to reach out perhaps to a distant sound, perhaps traffic going by. I'm on a fairly busy street. I can hear traffic in the background. Perhaps the sound of your breathing, other sounds around you, the sound of my voice. And become aware of that focal point of your hearing. And then become aware that you can also hear on the peripheral, aware of 
sounds that you can focus on. And then again, try to do something similar with what we did with our eyes. Try to keep your hearing focused in the center somewhere. And then become aware of the top of your hearing, the back of your hearing, the bottom of your hearing, the side of your hearing, and back up. Again, become aware of your ears receiving the auditory impressions from outside of you and become aware of the peripheral of your hearing. Understanding that as you do this, you are actually engaging in what Mr. Gurdjieff called the first conscious shock. And this is a profound act of mindfulness to be aware of our ears, to be aware of our ears receiving sound. And then move your attention to your nose. And inside your nose, inside the nasal cavity, we have olfactory receptors. And become aware of your nose receiving scents, receiving odors. And also become aware that we can direct the awareness of our nose. Perhaps you can become aware of your own smell or the smell in the room, or smell of food. Your nose, it can have a focal point and you can focus on certain scents. You can distinguish those scents that you are trying to focus on. So become aware that the nose has a focal point and that we can become aware of the source and direction of odors we can become aware of the movement of odors, perhaps a, 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 an odor passes by, and become aware that we also have this peripheral awareness within our nose, that we can direct our nose towards certain scents and certain odors. But we can also become aware of the general peripheral of our odors. So try to become aware of odors above, to the right, to the bottom, to the left, and above again. Try to become aware of the odors, the scents, the smells that the olfactory receptors in your nose and nasal passage are able to pick up. And then turn your attention to your taste buds. And we always have a taste in our mouth. For me, it's the faint trace of coffee uh, at this moment. But normally we do not pay any attention to the taste in our mouth. And again, we can really focus on a specific taste. I can focus on the specific taste of coffee in my mouth, but I can also expand my awareness because I've got taste buds in the roof of my mouth, throughout my tongue, and I can become aware also of the peripheral of my taste buds. So try to become aware of what you can taste. Become aware of the taste buds in your mouth receiving the external impressions of taste and become aware again that there's a profound process of transformation taking place. You are not really aware of the taste in your mouth. Your awareness is the electrical signals in your brain. The taste is transformed, that word again, into the electrical signals. And what you are really aware of are the electrical signals in your brain. So become aware of what you can see, the focal point, the peripheral. Become aware of what you can hear. Focus your hearing on a, on a focal point and become aware of the peripheral. Become aware of what you can smell, the peripheral. Become aware of what you can taste. And then let's try to overlap these because we can become aware of more and more and more things at the same time. 
Last week, I discussed this in terms of the simultaneity of mindful awareness. What can we be aware of that is occurring here and now in this moment? And mindfulness is simply defined as any present-centered focus of our atten attention done in a non-judgmental way. And that, is, uh, that comes from John Kabat-Zinn, uh, uh, the, 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 the professor of medicine, uh, the molecular biologist who first began to study mindfulness as a therapeutic tool. So anytime we focus on something happening here and now in this moment, it is an act of mindfulness. So become aware of what you see. Become aware of the sources of light. Become aware of the peripheral of your vision. Become aware of the light entering your eyes. Become aware of your eyes receiving these visual impressions. And try your best. And this is like a muscle. We can develop this awareness. Try your best to hold on to this visual awareness while you then add the auditory awareness. Aware of your eyes receiving light, receiving information, aware of the sounds coming in your ear, doing both at the same time mindfully, intentionally looking and listening. And so try to mindfully, intentionally look and listen and try to hold on to these two different forms of perception while also becoming aware of what you can smell. Perhaps your own scent, perhaps the smell of coffee, uh, perhaps there are certain odors in the room around you. So try to become aware of what you can see, hear, and smell. And then become aware of what you can taste. And try to do all of this together. Try to become aware of what you can see, hear, smell, and taste. Overlapping these different perceptual abilities. The ability to see, the ability to hear the ability to smell, the ability to taste. This is all about the division of our attention. We want to become aware of as many things as we can at one moment. Now, there's a limit to this. Um, as I said last week, um, I don't know if I have the diagram. Um, let me just check myself to see if I no I I'm not sure where my uh, other diagram went from last week let me see if I can try to open it I might not be able to quickly put my finger on it um, ah, I can't just give me one second and I will start sharing the screen. Um, so, with our head brain, looking, listening, hearing, smelling, and tasting. These are all in our head. And we can either engage in the mindful perception of the external impressions that we receive from the outside world, or we can become aware of our thoughts and the images, mentation by thought and mentation by form. And a moment ago, or a few minutes ago, I mentioned that there is a twin to self-remembering, active being mentation. So at the top, the looking, listening, hearing, smelling, and tasting is self-remembering. And that awareness of mentation by thoughts, words, and mentation by form, which is the sensory rich images. So we can imagine, as I said last week, seeing our mother's face. We can imagine hearing our mother's voice. We can imagine holding our mother's hand. We can imagine smelling our mother's perfume or scent. That is the twin of self-remembering, act of being mentation. 
And full self-remembering involves the head, the body, and the feelings. However, for the purpose of today, I don't really want to discuss feelings. Feelings are the most atrophied part of ourselves, and they are the hardest part to become aware of. But self-remembering that we should be doing and that we should be striving for now is the head and the body. So let's become aware of our physical body. And let's start to relax the body. And Mr. Gurdjieff said relaxation should come from the head down. So let's just relax the top of our head. Relax our forehead, relaxing our eyebrows, our eyes, moving down, relaxing our nose, face, the sides of our head, moving down, relaxing our jaw, our mouth, our throat, our neck, moving down, relaxing our shoulders, relaxing our upper arms, our upper torso, our chest and upper back. Relaxing our midriff, our solar plexus, our middle back, our elbows. Relaxing our lower torso, our abdomen, our lower back, our lower arms. Relaxing our hips, our hands. Relaxing our buttocks. Moving down, relaxing our upper legs, our knees, our lower legs, our ankles, the top of our feet, our feet, the bottom of our feet. Relaxing our toes and heels relaxing our body and if we're not relaxed it becomes harder to self-remember because that lack of relaxation is actually a form of physical identification so it helps to be able to relax yourself very quickly very easily from the head down to the body and one way to do this as a hypnotherapist i know this is to breathe in to the top of the head and as you breathe out send a wave of relaxation down your body to the bottom of your feet breathing into the top of your head and then relaxing your body down to the bottom of your feet as you just enter into that state of relaxation and then we'll do mr gurdjieff's filling exercise as a vessel fills with warm golden honey we want to fill our body slowly with sensation and I have to say that the first time I was taught this exercise back in 2006, I found it a little awkward and hard to do, but the more practice that I've gotten at it, the more I can do it. So just become aware of the bottom of your feet and then slowly fill with sensation up through your feet to the top of your feet. And then fill with sensation from the bottom of your feet up through your ankles the lower part of your lower legs, up through your lower legs, up to your knees, up through your knees, up to your upper legs, up through your upper legs to your hips, and then become aware of your hands as well. And then fill with sensation from the bottom of your feet, up through your knees, your hips, your hands, through the lower part of your torso to your solar plexus, your midriff, middle back, elbows filling with sensation up through your upper torso, up through your chest, upper arms, upper back, to your shoulders. And then continuing filling with sensation from the bottom of your feet up through the lower part of your neck, up through your neck, up into your skull, and then slowly filling with sensation up through your skull, perhaps to your eyes and ears, up to your forehead, and then to the top of your head, filling with sensation from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Now I'm going to uh, go back to a diagram to explain something. Uh, as I've said many times, the octave of food uh, is the one that Mr. Gurdjieff said, we have the natural ability, the highest energy produced by a normal man is the octave of food and it's C12. And within C12, you can see this molecule, LA24. 
the sensation of self is the using of this energy to be aware of our hands, to be aware of our whole body. In this moment, C12 comes into contact with so 48 and meets in the middle as La 24. And La 24 is the molecule of self sensing. It's that physical awareness, that sensation of self. And for a lot of people who are new to this path, perhaps they can only become aware of their hands or their feet or parts of themselves. And the goal is to develop this sensation of self. And because the octave of food is the only octave that is fully developed in a normal human being, this is where our work must really begin. We must first start and strive to develop this awareness of our physical body as one organic whole, to develop this awareness, this sensation of self. And then when we develop this sensation of self and we have it developed to a sufficient level, that is when we actually should really begin to then involve the head brain to become aware, mindful, of what we see, of our eyes receiving impressions, of our ears receiving impressions, auditory impressions, of our nose receiving olfactory impressions, of our taste buds receiving gustatory impressions. So the head brain, as I showed in that one diagram, I'll bring it back up. Um, the head brain, if you notice, I've got the positive sign over the head brain, and then I've got the negative sign associated with the body brain. This is something that Mr. Gurdjieff talks about. He said that when we start to engage in this intermediate form of self-remembering, using the head brain and the body brain together, we become like a battery. And between the positive and the negative, a substance is developed. And he calls them being autocolonitzers in Beelzebub's tales. It's like we create this substance. So the, the first step in self-remembering is to develop that sensation of self, to be able to sense our body as one organic whole. All humans can do this. We all produce C12. It is the highest energy naturally produced by the human organism. So this awareness of our physical body. And once we have developed this awareness, once we can hold it strong enough, then we add the awareness of what we can see, hear, smell, and taste. And the positive and the negative diodes, the positive and negative ends of the battery, our head brain, is like the positive end, our body is like the negative end, and we create a current, and this current creates a substance. And this substance then grows within us, and the more we accumulate this substance, the more we begin to help and slowly crystallize our inner being, the Kesjian body. So it's very important to understand the proper form and sequence to this process. So try to become aware of intentionally, mindfully looking, intentionally and mindfully hearing, or yeah, listening, hearing. I don't know why I'm listening and hearing. I guess I did that slightly asleep. Uh, mentally, consciously smelling, uh, tasting aware of what we can see, hear, smell, and taste. While holding the awareness of our body in the background. And this is very important in terms of the proper form and sequence. The holding of the body, the intentional and deliberate awareness of the sensation of self, holding it in the background, Holding it in second position is really important. 
Um, if we do not hold the sensation of ourself, that awareness of our body in the background, in second position, in first position, the conscious, deliberate, intentional receiving of external impressions, looking, listening, smelling, and tasting, while aware, holding on to the sensation of self, if we have not developed our ability to be aware of the sensation of self and to have that ability, that muscle strengthened to the point that we can hold it in the background, things can get distorted. We want to receive impressions in the proper sequence. And if we just focus on what we can see, hear, smell, and or taste, and we don't have the sensation of ourself in the background, all sorts of uh, poor, bad crystallizations can occur within us. This is something I will be talking about in the next meeting. Um, by holding the sensation of self in the background, we prevent this from happening. We allow our head brain to properly receive impressions in the proper form and sequence. And by holding our body, that sensation, that awareness of our body in second position, we are preventing other things from happening that would normally and naturally happen in a normal human being. They hear someone talking and then they just an idea comes to their mind and they're not paying attention and something is coming up from inside or some kind of feeling state. Something else can occupy second position and it can allow the way we receive impressions and the way we develop our inner body to get very distorted. And the way we prevent this is to have that sensation of self while we are consciously, intentionally, deliberately looking, listening, smelling, and or tasting. And if you have trouble doing all of them, the most important thing to develop is the awareness of the body, the sensation of self. And then maybe try to hold the sensation of self in the background and only become aware of what you can see. Or while holding the sensation of self in the background, only become aware of what you can hear, or only become aware of what you can smell, or only become aware of what you can taste. And slowly build up the head brain's perception, overlapping those different forms of external awareness. So these are all profound acts of mindfulness. What I see, what I see right now when I'm aware of seeing is something happening here and now in this moment, the power of now. I'm hearing when I'm mindfully listening, it is what is going on now. When I'm mindfully smelling, I'm aware of what is going on now. The same with tasting and the same with sensing my body. All acts of mindfulness bring us not only into the now, but also here, to that point of intersection between here and now. And that point of intersection is in our body. And here it's important to become aware, to realize that it's all our body. I am not seeing the visual images that are coming into my eyes. My eyes are receiving the photons and transforming them, that word again, into electrical signals that are being then rearranged and put back together in my brain. I'm only seeing the electrical signals. I'm only hearing the electrical signals. I'm only smelling and tasting the electrical signals. And what this means is that our body, our body is the most precious thing that we own. Without our body, we are nothing. Uh, there are various world-denying paths, and I'll perhaps do a meeting on them, like the Advaitin path or even the Buddhist path. Um, not so much the Buddhist, because they do emphasize strongly about the body and the mindful awareness of the body. But you have the Advaitin path, where they say everything is all an eternal, unified oneness in any form and distinction. 
are just illusions. And it is a real world denying philosophy. All we have is our body. And they deny the body and they deny the physical existence and they deny form and extinction and anything going on in the external world. And they focus on that unitative state, which is true. But this world and this body and what we are are also true. So the physical body, our body is the most precious object that we possess. And it is like a possession. It is not ours. It belongs to great nature. It belongs to the earth. It came from the earth. All the elements, all the molecules, everything that composes my body, I got from the earth and it will return to the earth. And this is why Mr. Gurdjieff said, we must not be identified with our body. It does not really belong to us. And yet, here and now, in this moment, it is the most important thing that we have. It allows us to do this inner work. It is this amazing organism. And uh, in uh, Paris Talks, uh, Mr. Gurdjieff asked someone, are your parents still alive? And their parents were dead. And he said, that means they no longer have a body. And so they can't do the work on themselves. And as their son, Mr. Gurdjieff gave him an exercise in doing the work for his parents, helping them without the body. But there, what he was really emphasizing is the importance of being embodied beings. Having a body allows us to do things that we could not do without a body. It allows us to accelerate our evolution, to accelerate our development. So become aware of your body. Become aware of your body from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Become aware of the sensation of your body as one organic whole. Become aware of what Mr. Gurdjieff termed the sensation of self. And then while holding on to the sensation of self, again, become aware of mindfully, intentionally looking, receiving visual impressions through your eyes, mindfully and intentionally receiving auditory impressions through your ears, mindfully and intentionally receiving olfactory impressions through your nose and gustatory impressions through your taste buds. Try to become aware of what you can see, hear, smell, and taste while sensing your body and practice this everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, or as Mr. Gurdjieff said, always and everywhere. Um, this is something we can do when we're walking down the street, when we're standing in a line, when we're sitting in a chair, we can bring this mindful awareness to whatever we do. And as I mentioned earlier, when we do bring this mindful awareness to what we do, we remember it. It becomes forever a part of us. So if you're a student uh, sitting in a classroom trying to be as mindful as you can, you will absorb more information. Uh, we generally absorb information mechanically. We lose the awareness of ourselves. And as I mentioned last week, this is a stepping up to a higher state. So let's just end with the collected state exercise. I've done a lot of explaining and meandering through this inner exercise. But as the earth is surrounded by an atmosphere, so too are we surrounded by an atmosphere. Become aware of your atmosphere. Draw in towards you, collect it, keep it tranquil, keep it still, keep it calm. Try to keep your atmosphere perhaps a meter, meter and a half, that's like four to six feet around you. Become aware of the boundary of your atmosphere. And we can disturb the atmosphere through our thoughts, through our feelings, through our sensations. So keep your mind clear, tranquil. Keep your feelings calm, tranquil. Keep your body, your sensations tranquil. Keep the atmosphere around you tranquil. And in a moment, I'm going to count from one up to three. And when I get to three, just breathe your atmosphere in 
And as you breathe out, follow Mr. Gurdjieff's instructions and imagine that something remains. One, two, three. Breathe your atmosphere in, and as you breathe out, imagine something remains, something that settles within you. Mr. Gurdjieff said that whenever we consciously and deliberately and intentionally sit down to do inner work, such as a morning sitting, we shouldn't finish it and then get up and rush off. We should spend at least 10 or 15 minutes staying in place where we were, allowing the results of the inner work to settle within us. And then it's always good to end with an affirmation. And this is Mr. Gurdjieff's affirmation. So in your mind, silently repeat after me, may results from this exercise be transformed within me or transubstantiated within me for my inner being. And again, uh, transforming, we can also use the word transubstantiating within us um, so I'm going to uh, continue uh, talking a bit about um, mindfulness from a Gurdjieffian perspective whoops um, my controls on my screen are hiding there, there. Um, And when I scroll down, I'm going to ask you to try to become aware of what you can see, hear, smell, taste, while sensing your body, as little or as much as you can do. So I'm going to read now. Not one of you has noticed, and this comes from In Search of the Miraculous uh, by P.D. Uspensky. Uh, this is Mr. Gurdjieff. Not one of you has noticed the most important thing that I have pointed out to you, he said. That is to say, not one of you has noticed that you do not remember yourselves. He gave particular emphasis to these words. Become aware of yourself as I scroll up. You do not feel yourselves. And here I have a problem with Uspensky. The word feeling has caused so much distortion in people's understanding of the process of self-remembering. I would actually translate that word as sensing. You do not feel or sense yourselves. You are not conscious of yourselves. With you, it observes just as it speaks, it thinks, it laughs. You do not, and again, I would translate the word feel. You do not sense. I observe, I notice, I see. Everything still is noticed, is seen. In order to really observe oneself, one must first of all remember oneself. He emphasized these words. So as I scroll up, try to remember yourself. Uh, here, try to remember yourselves when you observe yourselves. So the act of self-observation is intimately linked, as an aside, intimately linked with the ability to self-remember. Whenever Mr. Gurdjieff uses the word self with a hyphen, like self-observation, self-sensing, um, these are all profound acts of mindfulness. So try to remember yourselves when you observe yourselves, and later on tell me the results. Only those results will have any value that are accompanied by self-remembering. Otherwise, you yourself do not exist in your observations. In other words, we are completely identified with what we are observing. The first step up out of that state of identification is this self-awareness, this awareness of ourself. Otherwise, you yourselves do not exist in your observations. In which case, what are your observations worth? And here, I'm just going to uh, uh, make an aside. Um, Mr. Gurdjieff said that we have to accumulate photographs, 
so to speak, metaphorically speaking, of ourselves in the lower state. And here we run into a problem. A machine is incapable of self-reflectivity. A machine is incapable of observing itself. So the moment we observe ourselves, the moment we become mindful, we step out of that mechanical state. We begin to transform hydrogen 24. We begin to move up and we're no longer in that state. And he said that we have to collect and accumulate perhaps thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of pictures of ourself in order to really begin to observe ourselves, in order to engage in self-study. And here's the trick. Uh, when we self-remember, in that moment of self-remembering, it's like we have a fleeting impression of what we were like in the moment before. Uh, I was once actually at my ex-wife's when we were married. Her grandfather lived in the country up near a place called Swords, uh, near Perry Sound. Uh, and there was a cupboard with a light on, and it was a bare light, and you could turn the light on and off in the cupboard. And I was in the cupboard, and I looked at the light, and I turned it off. And the image of the light stayed in my mind for a second after, before the darkness came. And this is a great metaphor. In the moment we first self-remember, in the moment we first step up, into world 24, into the realm of mindful awareness, uh, self-remembering as fully as we can, we are actually taking a tiny snapshot of ourself in the state that we were in, in the mechanical state. And we have to put these images together. And it's not just visual images, but auditory, olfactory, gustatory, feeling. It's an awareness of what we were. So by self-remembering, not only are we lifting ourselves up, but we are taking these snapshots that we need to put together in order to understand ourselves as a machine and understand where we are broken and leaking energy, because this is all about energy. If we do not have the energy to self-remember, we can't self-remember. If we have the energy to self-remember, and then we use all that energy up, we will stop self-remembering. It is an energetic process, and when we leak energy at the lower level, through negative emotions, through identification, through lying, through formatory thinking, through excessive movements, uh, through internal considering, um, those are the primary and main ways that we leak energy. When we begin to be able to observe ourselves and fix some of those leaks, we will then be able to spend more time in the state of self-remembering. Um, okay, uh, to continue. So that came from In Search of the Miraculous. The, this is the Priore, um, or the Priory in Fontainebleau, uh, uh, just near Paris. Uh, in France, February 28, 1923. This comes from views from the real world. Separation of oneself from oneself. This phrase plagued me for years until I read the book Transformations by J.G. Bennett. It was like a light went on and an ah. Um, just read the quote. As long as a man does not separate himself from himself, he can achieve nothing, and no one can help him. To govern oneself is a very difficult thing. It is a problem for the future. It requires much power, that is energy, much power and demands much work. But this first thing, to separate oneself from oneself, does not require much strength. It only needs desire. And be aware of yourself as I'm scrolling up. Serious desire, the desire of a grown up man. If a man cannot do it, 
It shows that he lacks the desire of a grown up man. Consequently, it proves that there is nothing for him here. What we do here, that is at the Institute for the Harmonic Development of Man, what we do here can only be a doing suitable for grown up men. Quite a few things to unpack here. Um, what we do here can only be a doing, notice the word doing, suitable for grown up men. I've met people who have been in various Gurdjieff groups for years, and they are afraid that they're going to die like a dog, and they are afraid that they are a machine. And I say, I say to them, the minute you become aware of the top of the baby finger in your right hand, you are no longer a machine. A machine is stuck in world 48. A machine transforms that low level of energy. The moment we develop any kind of mindful awareness, however slight that mindful awareness is, we are no longer a machine. And the attributes of a machine, uh, a machine lacks unity. It lacks will. And it lacks the ability to do. Now, unity, will, and the ability to do are really products of hydrogen 12, the conscious, uh, objective conscious, the awaking state. But we can start to do. And it is what we do when we become mindful. So when we become mindful of our breath, mindful of our body, we are exercising our ability to do. We are exercising our will. Now, when we just start to do it, we have a long way to go. But in this moment that we are aware of our body, in this moment perhaps that we are aware of our breathing or aware of the light coming into our eyes, the sound into our ears, the, the odors into our nose, the taste, bud in our taste buds in our mouth, in this moment, we are no longer a machine. In this moment, we have stepped up into the realm of hydrogen 24, the planetary realm, as I discussed last week. And in this moment, we have a, an ability to do. To be mindful of what we see is an act of doing. To be mindful of what we hear is an act of doing. Same with smelling, taste, the sensation of self. So every time we engage in any form of mindful awareness. It requires intent. You cannot accidentally become mindful. Mindfulness is the deliberate and intentional focusing of the power of our attention on something that is happening here and now in this present moment. And you cannot accidentally become intentionally aware. Uh, Mindfulness is like that dead man switch on the railway where the person had to be alive holding it. And if they lost consciousness, they would then take their hand off the button and the train would stop. We've got to always be holding that button down when we are in this state of mindful awareness. And when we lose that energy, when we run out of that energy, when we drain of that energy, we let go of that button and we slip back down to the lower state. And as I've said many times, so this is a double-pronged approach. On one hand, we should be trying to lift ourselves up. And on the other hand, we should be trying to figure out where we are leaking energy at the lower level so that we can then begin to fix those leaks so that that energy can be conserved for this higher awareness. Mr. Gurdjieff said that we wake up every morning with enough energy to do things properly, to engage properly in this process. But we leak and fritter it away through, as I said, identification, internal considering, formatory thinking, lying, excessive movements, and uh, um, some other things. Uh, so we've got to figure out where we are leaking energy and try to pull ourselves up. So it's a double-pronged approach. Now, another thing that's very important here is the separation 
of oneself, from oneself. And again, uh, J.G. Bennett's book, Transformations. I'm not a huge fan of Bennett. Um, there are some key books, and Transformations is one of those key books. There is a tremendous amount of information in that book, and uh, I would recommend uh, getting a copy of it or perhaps finding a PDF of it online or something. Um, it's an important book. And the separation of oneself from oneself. In order for me to become mindful of my hands, in order to sense my hands, and I have more sensory nerve nodes in my hands than anywhere else in my body, so the easiest place in our body we can become mindful is our hands. In order to become mindful of my hands, in order to sense my hands, in order to be aware of my hands, I actually have to inwardly separate from my hands to observe my hands. A moment ago, I'm assuming that your feet were in a state uh, transforming hydrogen 48. You were not aware of your feet. Now that you are aware of your feet, you are actually transforming hydrogen 24, that awareness of your feet is the product of hydrogen 24, in particular, la 24 of the octave of food. And to do that, there's an inward separation. You have stepped back and you are observing your feet. And here I'm going to step a little bit beyond where most of you can be aware and sort of let a little, bit, a little bit of the cat out of the bag using an English expression. In order to observe my hand, in order to sense the fingers, the bones, the blood, the ligaments in my hand, I actually have to inwardly separate. And at first, when we begin to practice mindful awareness, it's like holding a light onto our hands. It's like shining a light on our hands and we become aware of our hands and the light we are shining on our hands. But every act of mindful awareness involves a higher energy. We may not be able to be aware of that energy, but to become aware of our hands actually requires C12 of the octave of uh, uh, food. And it's the misuse of C12 that leads to so many problems, and I will be discussing this at the next meeting. Um, so the awareness of our hands involves a little bit of C12, and 12 is the energy of conscious awareness. It's the energy of the real I. And initially, when we begin to practice mindfulness and learn mindfulness, it's like shining a flashlight on our hand. It's observing our hand. We are inwardly separating ourselves from ourself. But as we develop, and as we can become more and more mindful of more and more things, our awareness moves back. And what is it that is really observing the hand? And although we may not be aware of it, it's the real eye. It's that uh, witness. The, um, uh, there are a number of different names they use for it. The real eye, the witness, the observer. And to bring the observer out, to grow the witness, is to grow the real eye. Willem Nyland, um, one of Mr. Gurdjieff's students, said that the real eye is like a single cell that is very shy and must be coaxed out and growing. So we are born with the real eye in embryonic form, and it is up to us to develop it, just like we are born with the Kesjian body partially developed, more like a fetus of 28 weeks, and we have to grow it within the con confines of the body, and we've got to nurture it and develop it. And then in that, in the Kesjian body, we develop the real eye. But ultimately, this is all about awakening the observer. It's about moving our awareness back. And here, Mr. Gurdjieff never talked about this because of the ability of imagination and people to think that they possess this quality when they don't. 
a lot of people, when I talk about the observer, the witness, they go, oh, yeah, I know all about that. But I don't see it in their eyes. I don't see it reflected in any kind of real, true self-awareness. This is something that must be deliberately grown and nurtured. So all acts of mindful awareness are like separating the self from the self. A metaphor that I come up with when I, when I teach this to my clients, I was once watching a documentary on YouTube about ancient Greek warfare. And I realized that the soldiers with the bronze swords and the shields on the front of the battle, in the thick of battle, are in a state of identification. They are in a state of attachment, using the Buddhist terms. They are caught up in that moment. But the general on the back of the hill has moved into the observer position, watching what is going on, observing. And so this first step up involves a stepping deeper into ourself to begin observing ourselves. So to become aware of our body as one organic whole, to develop, excuse me, the sensation of self requires that inward detachment. It requires that separation of the self from the self. It's the first movement upwards. So the first movement upwards is really a movement inwards. It's into that mindful awareness. So we observe our body. We become aware of our body. We become mindful of our body. We become mindful of what we see. We become mindful of, we observe what we hear. We observe what we smell. We observe what we taste. So this is the first step. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, reading now. Um, question. What is a higher state of being? And he doesn't cover them all here. Um, answer, Mr. Gurdjieff, there are several states of consciousness. Sleep, in which our machine still functions, but at a very low pressure. Um, density, pressure. Each level up is twice as refined, twice as vibrant, twice as intelligent as the level below. So the difference between the mechanical machine-like state of world 24 and the mindful, personally conscious, self-reflective state of world 24 is that world 24 is twice as vibrant, twice as refined, twice as intelligent as world 48. An analogy is to imagine two stories of an apartment building. And on one floor, there's a big room, and the floor is completely open, and there are 48 people in that room. And then the next level up, it's the same dimension, but there are 24 people in that room. The 48 people are more constrained. They are under twice as many constraints, twice as many laws as the realm above. And the room above, there's a greater movement. There's a greater flexibility. And so these states that we talk about, the mechanical state is twice as heavy, twice as dense, twice as stupid as the mindful state. So we can use the word like a low pressure, light pressure, as we move up. Sleep, in which our machine still functions, but at a very low pressure. The waking state, as we are in this moment, these are the two that all the average man knows. And 95% of humanity, maybe even more, 96%, the rest of us are like a statistical anomaly, don't live in the mindful state. They are not even aware of it. They can become mindful in a moment, and then they just go back down into that normal state. I don't like to use the term waking state I prefer to use the term waking sleep, where people are in a state of waking sleep. They're machines, they're ruled by habits, they're robots in this state of waking sleep. And then the next level up, this is another definition for mindfulness, self-consciousness. No other things are self-reflectivity. He also uses the term 
personal consciousness. It's different than the awakened state of objective consciousness. So, and he doesn't talk about that state in this quote. Three, what is called self-consciousness. It is the moment when a man is aware both of himself and of his machine. We have it in flashes, but only in flashes. And again, most people have it in flashes because they are leaking energy in so many different ways that they cannot sustain the state and it happens in flashes. There are moments when you become aware not only of what you are doing, but also yourself doing it. You see both I and here. You see both the I and the here of I am here. Both the anger and the I that is angry. Call this self-remembering if you like. And here, I want to make an aside um, to self-remember. I actually define as any two brain forms of mindful awareness. The most important is the head brain and the body brain. And two brain mindful awareness with two brains, and one of them has to be the physical brain. So all forms of self-remembering begin with the sensation of self. The octave of food, the ability to uh, uh, transform C12 allows everyone on this planet to develop the sensation of self. And uh, I'll probably do a meeting sometime on the uh, fleeing of the world, the way that uh, he talks about a hack into the process of awakening that they don't understand the first conscious shock. So they just use that physical awareness and they hack into that through celibacy, fleeing the world, various other things. Um, understanding that gives us great insight into the process of identification. But self-remembering is any two-brained mindfulness. And one of them has to be the physical body. So you can actually become aware of what you're feeling in this moment, your emotional state. And if you do it with the awareness of your body, you are also self-remembering. So either our head brain plus our body brain or our feeling brain plus our body brain are both forms of self-remembering. The most important one to develop, the one that we should work on is the head brain and the body brain, the positive and the negative and slowly build up our ability to do this. Okay, now back to the quote. Now, when you are fully and always aware of the eye and what it is doing and which eye it is, you become conscious of yourself. Self-consciousness is the third state. This is the awareness of realm and world 24. Um, so it's stepping up into the mindful state. I'm just going to, I, I may not make a lot of comments because we may be running out of time. There are another 10 minutes. Um, but I'm going to bring up, and I've talked about a lot of this already. Um, hopefully now it will make more sense to you. This comes from In Search of the Miraculous. There is, however, a possibility of increasing the output that is of enabling the octave of air and impression and the impression octave to develop further. Um, let me just pull this down slightly. Um, quickly go. So the left side, that's man as he is born. Um, can I magnify this? Yeah. That's man as he is born. The dough of the octave of impressions, if you notice on the left side, doesn't develop anywhere. It just stops. We transform that energy into electrical signals. It feeds us. We don't need to do that work. So he's talking about moving into the state of personal consciousness, the center. So about uh, having dough move up to ray, and then me move up to fa, and then this allows the octave of air to develop higher. Um, so, uh, whoops, and now I've got those squiggles on the screen and I can't get rid of them. Um, 
Let's see if I can get rid of them. Nope, they're not going. My back button's not working. It doesn't really matter. There is, however, the possibility of increasing the output. That is, of enabling the air octave and the impression octave to develop further. For this purpose, it is necessary to create a special kind of artificial shock at the point where the beginning of the third octave is arrested. This means that the artificial shock must be applied. I'm going to just try to stop sharing this and share it again just so I can get rid of that squiggle. Um, for this purpose, it is necessary to create a special kind of artificial shock at the point where the beginning of the third octave is arrested. This means that the artificial shock must be applied to the note of Do, 48. But what is meant by an artificial shock? It is connected with the moment of the reception of an impression. The note Do, 48, designates the moment when an impression, and here I prefer the term to be a little more specific, external impression or you know, a visual, auditory, olfactory, or gustatory impression enters our consciousness. An artificial shock at this point means a certain kind of effort made at the moment of receiving an impression. It has been explained before that in ordinary conditions of life, we do not remember ourselves. We do not remember, that is, we do not feel ourselves. And here again, I have a big problem with Uspensky. He has led to so many problems with people understanding what self-remembering is. And Mr. Gurdjieff cleared this up in a number of lectures. It's in uh, the third series, Life is Only Real Then When I Am. Uh, it's a fallacy, a problem of English. Uh, did you feel that? Yes, I felt that. Did you sense that? This is more of a sensation. But we can use the word feel to mean sense. And he said it's very important to distinguish between feeling and sensing. And here, Uspensky and Uspensky translated this from his original Russian. So the error goes to Uspensky. And this is a major, major error in In Search of the Miraculous and in the teachings and has led to more people being messed up and having incoherent understandings of what self remembering is. It would be much better if instead of that word feel ourselves we use sense so um, that is we do not sense ourselves are not aware of ourselves at the moment of a perception of an emotion of a thought or of an action if a man understands this and tries to remember himself Every impression he receives while remembering himself will, so to speak, be doubled. 48 to 24, there's a doubling. It's a doubling of the intelligence. It's a doubling of the vibration, a halving of the density. Every impression he receives while remembering himself will, so to speak, be doubled. In an ordinary psychic state, I simply look at a street. But if I remember myself, I do not simply look at the street. I feel that I am looking as though I am saying to myself, I am looking. Again, the feel. Instead of one impression of the street, there are two impressions. One of the street and another of myself looking at it. This second impression produced by the fact of remembering myself is the additional shock. Moreover, it very often happens that the additional sensation connected with self-remembering brings with it an element of emotion. That is the machine or that is the work of the machine attracts a certain amount of carbon 12 to the place in question. Efforts to remember oneself, observation of oneself at the moment of receiving impression and impression, observations of one's impressions at the moment of receiving them, registering, so to speak, the reception of impressions and the simultaneous defining of the impressions received. All of this taken together doubles the intensity 
of the impressions and carries Do 48 to Re 48. At the same time, the effort is connected with the transition of one note to another and the passage of 48 itself to 24 enables Do 48, that's the octave of impressions, of the third octave to come into contact with Mi 48 of the octave of air, because without that additional energy, that additional shock, the octave of air is unable to transform higher. So becoming aware of the receiving of impressions through our eyes, ears, nose, taste buds, at that point allows the octave of air, which stops at Mi 12, the second octave, to give this note the requisite amount of energy necessary for the transition of the me to fa. In this way, the shock given extends also to me 48 and enables the second octave to develop. So here we can see this. Um, I'm just trying to try and get my tool. Uh, so when we become aware of what we see here, smell, taste, it allows this to develop, but it also gives the me of the octave of air the intensity it needs to move up. Uh, so by doing this, we begin to grow our being. And as you can see through these diagrams, it is a real, not metaphorical growth of our being. It is a real growth of our being. Um, oops, let me just go back. So, um, well, there's something here I wanted to, to just briefly talk about. Um, ah, yes. He said as well, uh, moreover, it very often happens that the additional sensation with self-remembering brings with it an element of emotion. That is, the work of the machine attracts a certain amount of carbon-12 to the place in question. And here, this is bringing an element of joyful awareness to our ability to self-remember. So mindfully, intentionally looking, listening, smelling, and tasting while sensing the body as one organic whole. And if you can, to also breathe in a tiny dollop of joy. When we breathe in that tiny dollop of joy, we are actually bringing some, not C12 to the process, but SO12 of the octave of air. And if we can mindfully look, listen, smell, and taste while sensing our body and breathing in, bringing a degree of joy, we are on the path to becoming a three-brained being. And this process of becoming a three-brained being of being mindful in all three of our centers is the attribute of a man number four. To even just become aware of the fingernail in our right hand is to briefly touch man number four, to engage in the two-brained self-remembering, the head-brain awareness of external impressions and the body-brain sensing of self is to move further and further into the realm of man number four. Each of these realms, like world 24, can be broken down into an octave. And so the Do is a very limited form of mindful awareness. Whereas when we get to the top, it's the full three-brained mindful awareness, the head, the body, and the feelings. And some people are able to actually access the emotions. If you can, when you self-remember, try to breathe in a tiny feeling of joy. Try to add feeling to this process, and it will help to accelerate your results. Um, at any rate, um, I've given you a lot to think about. 
in the next meeting, I'm going to uh, begin to look at the misuse of C12 and the abnormal crystallizations that can occur within the Kesjian body, within our essence. Our essence can be a deformed thing. Um, as we've, sat, we've seen in previous uh, meetings when I've read quotes from Mr. Gurdjieff talking about the essence, the essence can get deformed. And this is through the misuse of C12. And uh, so I will take that up next meeting. It's going to be a very important one in terms of the theoretical understanding of this work. Um, Hisham, thank you for being here today. <laughs> um, you know, with the fact that uh, everyone else isn't here, um, you know, that's just one of these things of the universe. Um, and, you know, for it's actually working. I'm able to see us live. There's a 10 second lag on Facebook. So in the future, hopefully I'll end a bit sooner and I will be able to solicit questions and hopefully see the questions come up in comments and be able to answer them from people who are watching on Facebook. And uh, unfortunately, I would like to ask you, you know, um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm sure you do, but we're out of time. Um, so thank you for being here, Hisham. Um, uh, thank you for those of you watching on Facebook and those of you watching on YouTube later, thank you as well. Um, take care. Bye now. Bye. Bye.